Well, hello, it's just me today. And I'm here to talk about uh, the OpenSSL, OpenSSH vulnerability. But got a few other things. First, there's an article on someplace called earth.com uh, where they say a study has shown that you can live 24 years longer if in your 40s you adopt healthy habits, which seems like this has been well known since at least the time of Socrates and probably longer than that. But anyway, the the eight habits are being physically active, being free from opioid addiction, not smoking, managing stress, a healthy diet, not habitually binge drinking, maintaining good sleep, and having positive social relationships. So I imagine that's all true. It's sort of nice to have a number on how much good that does you. And another one that a recent study has shown is that taking a probiotic slows age-related cognitive decline. So... That's interesting. Anyway, onto this open SSH vulnerability. It got a lot of attention. It's remote code execution in open SSH's forwarded SSH agent. And this is something I've never used. And as far as I can tell, it does not come on by default. <laughs> and it's something that would not attack the server. It would attack the client. So if you put up a malicious SSH server and you trick people into connecting to you, and they're using this SSH agent forwarding, which is something people do to maintain all their SSH cryptographic keys unencrypted in memory so they don't have to type in the password to connect. Then there's a risk. And by the way, in general, the risk has been known for a long time. They've warned you that SSH agent is a fairly risky thing to do, and there are alternative uh, systems you can use that are safer. But anyway, the surprising thing that uh, was found in this vulnerability is that there's a whole bunch of libraries that are loadable through the SSH agent from the server, and a bunch of them have an executable stack. So they must be really out of date. And they found a lot of uh, simple buffer overflows or ways to put code on the stack and execute it in a lot of those libraries. So it does indicate a, a well-known uh, poor practice that a lot of people really do is pretty dangerous, probably even more dangerous than people thought it was. So I guess we can expect some patches coming out about this. Uh, Flipper Zero, the hardware gadget to do wireless attacks now has an app store with games and uh, interesting attacks and everything on it. So that's a cute idea. Uh, there is an article from the Stanford Internet Observatory analyzing child safety on federated media, which is Mastodon. Um, revealing in great detail something that I've heard rumors about quite a bit, which is that there is a Japanese server which is all full of child porn, which apparently is more widely accepted in Japan, which I guess makes sense. I know they have vending machines to sell schoolgirl underwear, so they seem to culturally accept pedophilia a lot more than America. And anyway, uh, they say that they're not federated with anybody. They're banned everywhere. But anyway, they've been analyzing it. And the results of their analysis is that there is some child pornography on federated media and also that there is no real good system of getting rid of it, which is a problem. Content moderation on federated media is sort of disorganized and ineffective. There's not a good way to take things down. There's not a good way to rapidly track down all the copies of things. And uh, that's what they say. They really, they argue that for... Uh, to get rid of the child porn, there should be a more robust system of content moderation available in the Federation. And this might be coming because supposedly the new Twitter competitor from Meta, Threads, is going to join the Federation. And that's interesting. Um, uh, I'm on Mastodon and I haven't jumped on Threads, but perhaps we will be interoperating with Threads soon. And uh, that might be good. That would imply that... Uh, the most, the all important thing is that you should own your followers. You should own your friends. When Elon Musk decided to destroy Twitter, I lost contact with a whole bunch of people. Where they scattered, it destroyed my uh, my neighborhood. And the same thing happened. I used to have a Yahoo chat room, and they destroyed that neighborhood. And so, if the neighborhood is owned by some company, they will just destroy it because the people in charge tend to be billionaire lunatics. And uh, Logically, that doesn't make any sense. It ought to be a decentralized system. So your list of friends is something under your control and you can still remain in contact with them as you move from one system to another. So it'd be nice if we can have that. We'll see to what extent the Federation actually creates that. 
in South Florida, the ocean temperature has now exceeded 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which is horrifying. Uh, bad for the coral, bad for the fish, bad for the planet. Uh, we do seem to be in a climate emergency, getting worse much more rapidly than was expected. And I saw recently Donald Trump is still saying there's no global warming. It's all nonsense because I guess he'll be saying that until the water's up to his chin. Uh, but hopefully less people will believe him. Now a couple of people have come out who have been taking Ozempic and the related drugs for a couple of years and saying it had really bad effects on them. Now their stomachs are paralyzed. One woman says she quit taking the drug, but she still throws up many times a day because it's fouled up her stomach. So that is interesting. You know, everybody's rushing on taking this stuff to lose weight. And I don't think we know what the long-term consequences are. So it is important, I think, to realize that there's some chance of that. Now, whether there's a large chance of that, I don't know. And I don't think anybody else knows either. That's why I'm not taking this stuff. Um, and I'm not in any hurry to take it. Although losing weight is good. Uh, I, I think if you're diabetic, you might have to take it. But I think if you're just trying to lose weight, uh, I wouldn't be in a hurry to jump on that stuff. Let other people test it out for a few more years first, I think. There is an article at digitaltrends.com of someone who says that he found a good a or augmented reality set of glasses and he's very excited these things are um the x real air uh the most interesting models uh so he's tested x real air glasses with the beam accessory where you have to connect it with a usb-c cable to what looks like a power source but the data comes by Wi-Fi from your phone. And he says it's not very heavy, not very clunky. It looks like normal sunglasses. And now you've got like a big screen projected in front of you and you can move it to the side and you can see it. And he said it's light and comfortable to wear for a long period of time. So, you know, we'll see. But um, uh, this is certainly when somebody makes uh, augmented reality glasses that are really comfortable that work, it will be huge. You won't have to carry around cell phones. You won't have to sit at tables with big monitors like I'm doing right now. We'll just have the computer screen going with us everywhere we go. And uh, I think it would be great if it worked. And anyway, there's one version of it that's at least one person likes. Uh, there was a survey of college students showing that most college students, both the liberals and the conservatives, feel like if their professor says something offensive, they should turn him into the administration and examples of offensive things are extremely anodyne statements. So let me get the list of, of things they tested them on here. Things you might say, if you look at the data, there's no evidence of anti-Black bias in police shootings. Um, requiring vaccination for COVID is an assault on individual freedom. It is clear that affirmative action is doing more harm than good and should be eliminated. Uh, not getting vaccinated for COVID is irresponsible and inconsiderate to others. It is clear that we have a problem with racist shooting in the United States, shooting unarmed black men, owning a gun is the right of every U.S. citizen. Uh, a civilized society doesn't need guns. These seem to me like statements a person might very reasonably make and defend, not things that you need to go complain to the administration and get people fired over, but a lot of students want them fired for doing this or punished or silenced. So that is... A disturbing thing, you know, and uh, I wonder, you know, I why well, I haven't gotten in trouble for saying controversial things, but I think it's because in California it's a monoculture. Um, there are no conservatives, there are no Republicans. Everybody's on the same side, so um, you're not going to offend anybody. Uh, but it is not healthy that academics cannot make statements like that. Any of those statements is something that you should be allowed to say, and you should be allowed to present the evidence, and somebody should be allowed to contradict it, and you should be allowed to discuss it without someone screaming that you're a horrible person for saying that. Each one of those things is something that might be true and really ought to be dispassionately examined on the evidence, especially in a college classroom. So anyway, um, so there's an article saying that at sciencealert.com uh, saying experts say decades of recycling hype has backfired dramatically. And this, I think, is, is extremely clear. Um, people, consumers now believe 
that what they need to do is figure out the right recycling bin, which is extremely difficult. Every town has different rules and a lot of containers, it's not clear what bin to put it in. So people put the wrong stuff in the bin all the time. And they believe they're saving the planet by doing that when in fact, they totally are not. Uh, for example, plastic recycling is only only recycle something like 5% of the plastic. You're, it's completely fake. The mark on plastic saying it's recycling is fake mark and it isn't actually recycled. And they say what really would help is if people adjusted their purchasing to not buy things, single use packages that would have to be thrown away anyway. And focusing on recycling at the consumer level has deflected interest into the wrong area and reusing things rather than throwing them away and choosing things that, that, that don't come in single use packages would do a whole lot more good than this effort at recycling. So uh, that all sounds very sensible to me. So uh, there's another article finally going into more detail about, I think I mentioned this last time, Go a few Google engineers have put up this proposal um, called Web Environment Integrity. And uh, the experts are really mad about it. And now there are articles explaining in more detail how it works. The idea is that a website can interrogate your browser and see if you are really running the code as intended or if your browser has altered the code. That's what they call web environment integrity. And they're saying, therefore, I can refuse to run if the code has been altered and that will protect you from malware. But they make a very strong argument that what's really going on is they want to stop ad blockers, which, of course, modify the code and impair Google's business model. And they say this is a Google has tried this before. They push it out, claiming that it is a uh, security feature when it's just a way to trick you into seeing more ads. And they try and launder it by making it look like the individual Google engineers put it on their personal GitHub and it's not an official Google product, but it is. And so uh, they, they say it's Google being evil and trying to trick us all into having uh, ads forced upon us and basically digital rights management for the web. So people are very mad and they want to block it. And there's uh, the register has an article and there are other articles out there analyzing it, explaining more clearly what people are mad about. I was surprised to read. You remember Joe Biden had a dog and they had to take the dog away because it bit people. And now he got another dog. And then this dog has bitten Secret Service agents 10 times in four months. And the Secret Service agents say, you know, anybody else, the dog would be destroyed or muzzled. And it's just because he's the president, we have to put up with this. We have to keep getting bit by his unruly dog. And that is pretty outrageous abuse of power, I would say. Um, it's, you know, I, I'd rather have Biden than Trump, but he's got his flaws. And this is one of them. You shouldn't have your dog running around biting people. That's ridiculous. And nobody else could get away with it. And uh, it is an abuse of power to keep on doing a thing like that. That's completely unfair to the Secret Service agents and anybody else. And he should knock it off. And finally, there is another bug in the AMD CPUs, again, related to speculative execution, like Spectre and Meltdown. And uh, it occurs in the Zen 2-based Ryzen, Threadripper, and Epic CPUs, which are new, I think, high-performance CPUs. And once again, in order to run faster, they start executing instructions before they've executed the previous instruction, and sometimes they leave evidence in the register of doing that. And therefore, sometimes you can see the output of an instruction that you shouldn't be able to see because the previous instruction would detect that you're violating a security rule. And uh, that's what happened with the others. There are conditions under which you can peer into the future and look down a branch of code that is in fact blocked by a security rule. And therefore, you can penetrate security barriers. And as with Spectre and Meltdown, you can do it with an attack as simple as just JavaScript in a browser. You don't need root on the system or anything like that. So uh, they have issued a firmware update for the Epic 7002 chips. And again, we can expect more updates. And just like before, they're admitting that the updates lower performance. How much is not clear yet, but it was really serious for Spectre and Meltdown. It lowered performance to notes that the cloud services started giving you twice as much RAM for the same price to compensate for the large performance you lose by no longer engaging in speculative execution. So uh, the whole speculative execution thing 
seems to be a serious security problem. And it seems like we still haven't figured out how to deal with it, even in the latest generation of processors. You either sacrifice a lot of performance or you sacrifice some security. And that seems to be the current situation. Well, that's it for this one. And I'll have another one on Friday.